about her disability awareness nonprofit. So if you want to learn more about that, check around. Her details will be down here in the description box. And if you can't understand what I'm saying, you can turn on your subtitle. Thank you. How do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, I'm Larkin O'Leary, as Anna said, and I am uh, the president of Common Ground Society. And our nonprofit focuses on supporting families uh, who have loved ones with disabilities, as well as educating our community as to how to be more inclusive in society. And Anna and I got to meet on Instagram, and so I'm, yeah. I'm grateful for that. Yeah, and we actually met to Tina Bube, so if you haven't seen my interview with her, or you don't know who she is, I'll put that interview down here as well. Uh, so yeah, so my first question is, I know you're one of the owners and founders of Common Love Society, a many awareness nonprofit. Can you explain what the Common Man Society does? Yeah, so um, we offer support to families um, locally. We have like a local support group for for parents of kids with uh, parents of kids with disabilities um, and a community group for anybody who is an ally or interested in um, in joining our community, like therapists and and uh, people with disabilities themselves and and just kind of a whole range of people. Um, and we recently just launched a Spanish speaking support group here in Sonoma County. So I'm really excited about that um, to be able to hit that population. Um, and we're working towards getting a disability uh, support group here in Sonoma County for people with disabilities to join um, and you know talk about the issues they face um, and so that's up and coming. Um, and so we support our families and help, you know, help them navigate the system. Um, and we, we have like meetups and things like that. And then we also do education. So I'm actually a teacher um, and my son was born with Down syndrome and hearing loss. And, um, and so we do a bunch of elementary presentations. We have three different you know, presentations we do for elementary schools. And then we also do presentations for middle school, high school, colleges, and then just in the community about how to be inclusive in society. Yeah. So neat. Yeah, we definitely need more of that because yeah. there's, not, there's not too much out there as far as support news because I don't know why they don't have them and I don't know why people don't direct them to them. But yeah. uh, that's one of my things that I do as well because on my website, my EP, my website, which is also down here, I have a mix of resources with online support now. Because I, I noticed um, who now that I'm 20 years old, I, I am part of Adaptive Women Society on Facebook and Instagram and all that. But awesome. I, I noticed that there's not many of them. Yeah. Because I didn't even find them until I was older and I've been on social media for years, you know. Yeah. And I still had trouble finding them. Yeah. You know, one of the things we're talking about, so I have people with disabilities who I'm working with, adults with disabilities, helping me kind of form this group, obviously. Um, but one of the things we're talking about is the difference between physical disabilities and, and um, intellectual disabilities. Okay. And, you know, do you combine the two or do you have two separate groups or, you know, how that works? What's your opinion on that? I would love to, I would love to know. So my opinion on that is that you don't combine the two. I have a very strong opinion that like the stereotype that here on the EP like I end up breaking down the wall too. Because I will be out in public with 
one of my best friends who is my age, you know, yeah. and people will be like, oh, it, are you her caretaker? Are mm -hmm. you her nurse? Yeah. And talk to them or, or talk really down to me. Like, yeah. I'm a two year old and I'm my like, no, first of all, we are best friends. And then my like, you are? Well, my uh huh. Like, what else? Like, you really think a 19 year old or 20 year old would be a 20 year old caretaker? Right, right. The person? Like, is that really the tiny norm? And then they automatically assume because I have my walker, you know. Yeah. I have the method disability and so people don't approach me or approach me as a baby or talk to the person I'm with and I'm like no because I think that height is 13 when people do that. Yeah. It's the, the number one insert that I met not meaning me but people, yeah. people do. So I would do it Okay. I, you know, and that's a, a really valid point. I think that people just don't understand, right? And that's like our whole, yeah. our whole yeah. thing is getting the word out there and spreading it that yeah. people with disabilities are just people and right. you don't know what people are capable. You don't know what I'm capable of, you know, right. unless you talk to me and ask me. And, um, yeah. one of my favorite quotes is by, by Albert Einstein. And I don't know if you've heard it, but the quote is, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, you, it will live its life believing that it's stupid, right? And so it's the same, same thing with anything, right? We all have things we're good at. We all have things we struggle with. And, and that's kind of the message we're trying to spread. So I appreciate your opinion on that. Thank oh, you. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm so happy you asked. The people tend to combine. And yeah, yeah. how people do have and that might be their preference to be put in both. But yeah. uh, a whole different community of people like me who miss a citizen who walk out in public and they're treated like they have felt. Yeah. And it's, and that's a whole separate, like, separate issues that you face in yeah. society, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. And like this, my caretaker, or not even my caretaker, my best friend, who so I picked, I made a decision when I was older, you know, when mm -hmm. I became an adult, to pick my own caregiver. And I picked my best friend to be my caregiver. So I didn't want him. Um, no, I have anybody who yeah. in the, I didn't want somebody who way old, you know, yeah. taking me out in public, you yeah. know, and trying to interact with a teenage, well, not teenage, young adult like. Yeah, yeah, you know? that I, makes sense. I was like, that's not, that's not in the world. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, um, uh, can you explain your money and inspiration for falling time and down to tiny? Yeah, so um, so like I said before, my son James uh, was born with Down syndrome and hearing loss, and he has had a whole list list of medical issues. And um, so I was a teacher, um, and it was awesome when he was born because I was able to start those conversations about acceptance and inclusion with my middle school students. I taught middle school at the time he was born. Um, and then long story short he ended up having a lot of medical issues so i had to resign um but in the midst of it all um my son's preschool asked us to come do a presentation there for world down syndrome day which is march 21st so you should mark it on your calendar so you can celebrate um and world down syndrome day is just a day to you know talk about acceptance and inclusion people with down syndrome um 
And so we went in and did a presentation and our local uh, newspaper came and did a story on it. And then all of my teacher friends saw it and asked us to come into the classrooms. And it got so big that we started doing assemblies at schools instead of going classroom by classroom. Um, and then from there, it just sort of took off and we came up with new presentations, people from colleges and, and mothers groups and, um, you know, various places asked us to come do presentations for them. And we thought, why not turn this into a nonprofit where we can raise funds to support families. Um, so one of the things we offer is hospital bags, um, families who are stuck in the hospital for long periods of time. Um, I was stuck with my son. Um, for 40 days we had a 40-day hospital stay and then we had another 50-day hospital stay and you know i just i didn't have anybody who understood what it felt like you know and, and understood what i was going through and um and we want to be those people and we also um thought about the people who have those more rare diagnoses right like fragile x syndrome cornelia delang syndrome and they don't have support and they don't have people in their local community that they can talk to about what's going on and we wanted to catch them we wanted to catch them all you know and and be supportive for everyone so so then we became a nonprofit, and here and then and then the global pandemic hit um <laughs> Yeah. And so we like we incorporated during the pandemic, but um, but it's it's fine. It's it's going well. You know, we're continuing to grow and and meet cool people and continue on this journey. So um, yeah, that's how it started. Definitely. And then how have you taught your middle school and people in the classroom? Another thing that I when I was in high school. Yeah. I, I was in normal classes, but pe my peers did not understand or very rarely understood that I was with it. You know, yeah. Yeah. We, we, would, we would be working on a partner, you know, with a partner, and I, I would put out my idea and we'd be working on one of those document that everyone can edit on and stuff sure. and people would just look at my idea and demean it hate up demean it and wow. i i would be like okay i'm timing it <laughs> right. yeah and I, I would be like okay i'm i'm gonna be before you demean that right <laughs> yeah and that's again people just don't know right, right. They, they see you and they judge you based on what what you look like or right. how you sound and they have zero clue you yeah. know yeah yeah so i've been i've been thinking about talking to my own high school about like in students being in students and um because i don't know if you saw my interview with my old art teacher or not Mm -hmm. uh, did you see that one? Or no, not? I didn't see that one. Mm -mm. Uh, so he was talking about how he makes this classroom all inclusive instead of dividing everybody up. You know? Yeah. And I was thinking about talking to who this was about how not to divide people up because as much as they at my school, excuse me, at my they had a half for an art mentor where you would be paired up with an able bodied person to help you do art. And then that was their idea of inclusive. That was their idea of inclusive. And I was like, no. That's not, no, no. yeah. No. I I can tell you honestly, as a teacher, um, that and that's something we're working on doing too, is creating professional development for teachers, um, because I am a teacher. And I know being a gen ed teacher, like I loved all of my students, right? Mm -hmm. I like I'm still in touch with a lot of them. Um, and, and even just the whole whole wide range of kids. And, um, but, but one thing I realized after having James is that 
I wasn't as good a teacher as I thought I was to all students. You know, I thought I was, I really did right. think that I was doing the best job I could, but it was because I wasn't properly trained. And, you know, one thing that would be really great, uh, A, is to have you, you know, we would, I would love to help you create presentations and do, and do some presenting yeah. because I think that you have, you have a great, um, you have a great story and a great voice um, for that, but also, um, you know, teaching teachers that just because like, for example, just because my son has Down syndrome doesn't mean he's like another kid you met with Down syndrome, right? Like he, my son, the person, my friend Jessica, who I started Common Ground with, um, her son, her daughter has Down syndrome. And what was great about presenting with her is that our kids were about the same age, but completely different. Uh, her daughter, Annalise, um, was verbal. You could understand what she was saying. She was walking um, and she had zero medical issues. Whereas Jane, James, um, he didn't walk till he was almost three, um, but he was like potty trained at two and a half. And he knew all, he could match the word teacher to the picture teacher and the word bus to the school picture bus right and he like he knows all of his numbers his colors his letters he's very smart where Annalise is still working on alphabets and still working on those things and so it really varies just like it does for typically developing kids you know it does. It's, yeah yeah it's that label and and that's scary to people you know we're afraid of what we don't know and so if we could just talk about it you know yeah um uh, what are, how much do you hope in doing for your nonprofit? So, you know, going big, Anna, I'm going big. And at some point, what I would love to see is a common ground society in, in all the cities, right? In places where people can feel supported and included, where there are people presenting to their, their um, local people about how to be inclusive and sharing the stories of their lives so that people can begin to understand that, you know, I'm just a mom. Like, I'm just a mom who has a kid and I love my son, just like you love, well, you don't have kids, but when you do, and if you do, uh, or, or just like your parents love you or just like Sammy loves Bobby, right? Like all, all parents love their kids. And just because my son happens to have a label doesn't make that any different. And I just wish the world got it. You know, I wish they understood yeah. that I have to fight for my son to be included, which yeah. like, like in order for nor typically developing kids to go to preschool or whatever, they don't have to have 400 tests to get there, right? They just go. But my kid, like he has to have 50 tests in order to get into preschool. It's just, it's yeah. wild. We did. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to fight for myself, you know, or did. Yeah. Well, I still do, but I even more so in high school. Who so has the type the things that were automatically written in my IP, but yeah. never, and they always got overlooked. And so I would always be in the SSC room, you know, saying, if me, this is not, this is in my IP, and you yeah. did this. So yeah. I was pointing it out, like a person, a man, but if that I can't be with a male, have me to. Why now it doesn't matter, but back when I was in high school, I could not be with a male para in the bathroom. Sure. And for some reason, every time there was a male, they put me with him because they thought, oh, I can advocate for myself. And right. I. I would have, I would have known. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I said I have a clue yeah. for myself. But I bet this is written in my IP. Right. You need to open my you know. You shouldn't have to advocate for yourself. You but, should be getting what you need. Right. That's, and that's, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, but, okay. But, on um, what you have, oops, my iPad fell. One, two, based on what you have seen when it comes to disability and students, do you 
if we are making partner for a more inclusive world or not? I think we're making progress. I think conversations are starting to be had. I think that people are starting to, to understand um, because people are talking about it more. You know, 20 years ago, people would hide their children away and or they would be in a special day class just just that's where they were, right? But nowadays, families are fighting for inclusion and and fighting to get the word out there that their kids' lives matter and that they're just like your kids. They just have need things differently. Um, so I think we're starting to make progress. It's a start. I will say it's a start. Yeah. I don't know how much, but we're starting. Definitely. I am here with that. Um, in your opinion, what what are some ways the party can become more inclusive for those who have disabilities? You know, in my opinion, um, number one is presume competence. Uh, like you were saying earlier, when people would walk up to you and think, you know, act like, oh, how are you? I mean, come mm -hmm. on, you're a 20 year old lady, you know, like, yeah. let's let's presume competence and talk to one another like we should um, instead of asking a, the person like, oh, you know, asking me how old my son is. Like, let's just ask my son, you know? And if he can't respond, then go from there. But, mm -hmm. but I think presuming competence is super important. Yeah. And I also think um, just saying hi, that's our biggest thing is just say hi and smile. We well, can't see smiles now with masks, but yeah. you can see them with your eyes, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and just recognizing that people um, want to feel accepted and included. I, I have a family here who um, they went on a field trip and her daughter has a seizure disorder where she's not walking or she's walking now, but at that point she wasn't, she doesn't talk. Um, and so they went on a field trip and not one family acknowledged them, not one family, not one kid, nobody talked to them at all. And yeah. I mean, yeah. this was a preschool. Can you imagine how, how hurtful that would feel? Um, you know, I can't, and I mean, I can, as a matter of fact, yeah. but it's, it, it makes me really sad that that has happened. And that's like a, a big point to what people can do is just say hi. Right. Right. What about you? Do you? What about you? Do you have an opinion? Oh, yeah. So um, I talked about this on my Instagram all the time, and I ended up making a whole video about how to interact with a disabled person because I literally went on Instagram and I asked my followers if they wanted that, and they said, yeah. So my opinion, opinion or advice in that matter is talk to us like you would talk to anyone else and sure. then know to go to the person that we are with and uh, number two don't assume that we can't have that tongue because that's like encouraging to all my friends who, yeah. who move out with me i been out with them and they'll be did that really just happen? You know, right. and then it brings the conversation up. Is that all I am to you? Of yeah. course that's not all they are to me. They're not even that to me, you know. It's just a sense that needs a minute to help. But then when people doubt us like that, you yep. know, it brings up that conversation that me and my best friend don't want to have because it's so depressing, you yeah. know. To, yeah. But it, we can't help but have that at that point because yeah. it brings a person in their head, right? To me, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, and my best friend is, what is your ability? Uh, and my for people who, you know, want to approach uh, someone who has a disability or want to be um with them, but are not for how. 
Yeah, that's a great question. And, um, you know, like I said earlier, it's that piece of just saying hi and, and finding similarities, right? Like, oh, you have a pink sweater on? Pink's my favorite color, you know? Or what, what do you like to do on the weekends? I like to play with my children, which I do every day. <laughs> but, you know, I like finding similarities and continuing the conversation. Um, and if somebody can't communicate back, they usually have somebody there who can help facilitate that conversation. Um, and, you know, we have to, as, as able-bodied people, right, we have to, like, push past that feeling of, of fear and discomfort we may have, we need to feel uncomfortable. And we need to to move past that in order to really get to make some cool friends like you, you know, I never would have gotten to know you or, or had this conversation with you had I not been able to just realize that you're just a person and you just you want to chat and you you know, have your YouTube channel and like your disability, it's a part of who you are, but it's not all that you are. And mm -hmm. I think that that's a, a big piece that people miss often yeah. when they understand the disability community. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed, enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for being on my channel.